Hi guys, welcome to the video tutorial for 5.2.1. Uh, now the textbook puts this as circuits, potential, and current. Uh, but for me personally, I think this uh, is probably better off stated as circuits and Kirchhoff's law. So you can see that in my title there, but I'll just write it off. Kirchhoff. I think it's Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff. Okay, uh, Kirchhoff's law. So there's two learning objectives today. Just try to keep things short before your summative assessment, sorry, um, on Friday next week. Uh, and also remember to let me know uh, what you guys want me to do on Monday's lesson uh, so that I can best prepare that lesson for you guys. Or if you just want your own time, that's okay too. Um so we've got to look at some circuit diagrams, uh, some of the basic components and the differences between series and parallel circuits. And then we'll get into Kirchhoff's law in the second part of this video. So right here, these are probably the three most um, basic components in a circuit diagram. And um, so we got the cell, which is uh, usually a chemical reaction that allows charges to flow through. Uh, it also does something really important, which you guys probably know, is to uh, inc it increases the amount of electric potential energy. So once uh, I, I like to, well, we'll go into the get a little, to a little bit more detail about cells a little bit later. Okay, but they provide the energy or the uh, electric potential. Okay, wires is another really important thing to connect things together. Um, wires do in reality have a little bit of resistance. <clears throat> but for our purposes, it's so small that it gets in the way and overcomplicates the calculations for um, beginning physics students. So we usually throw that away and we just ignore that, okay? So negligible resistance, or meaning essentially it's zero resistance. So it's a perfect conductor. And our resistor is what you might call the load for your uh, circuit. It's, so it's um, it's where the energy is being used up on, okay? So a resistor does uh, something interesting is that it transforms the electric potential energy into thermal energy. And uh, a lot of times we don't actually want the heat, we want something else. So um, you might have something like a light bulb. So this is the circuit diagram for a light bulb. I should probably put it over here in the circuit diagram section. So you might have a light bulb. A light bulb is essentially a resistor, but it's giving us light energy. Okay, so it's giving us light. And we may want that light energy um, rather than just heat, okay? So um, a light bulb is a resistor, but it's a different form of resistor that gives us a different type of energy. Uh, but getting a little bit off track here. So uh, really the most fundamental things are a resistor, which could be a light bulb. So that's why I mentioned it. Uh, wires, the cell. So here we have our two different types of circuits, series and parallel. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Um, so a series circuit just means it's one after another. So here you can see that we have um, we have our cell, and sometimes we call cells batteries, battery cells, but um, for now we're just going to refer to batteries as cells, right? And then they're uh, in series, which just means one after another, right? So when you think about like a, a television series, there might be like season one, season two, season three. So it's always one after another, okay? And so that's what we're seeing here, one after another after another. Okay. Kind of like people queuing up for ice cream or something like that. Now, parallel circuits are when things are put placed side by side. So here, here we have two components that are placed in parallel. And here we have three components placed in parallel. And you might recognize this. Uh, this isn't always the case, but uh, you might see some of your, um, maybe like your remote at home. Uh, you might see that where there's two batteries placed side by side like this. It's not necessarily like this. Sometimes they're upside down, but uh, that's, a, that's a slightly different story. But um, for now, we're, we're just going to think of them as being parallel or side by side. Okay. And sometimes you'll get remote controls where 
you have to place the batteries in series like this, okay? So um, that's sort of the, uh, the two differences, okay? Side by side like that or one after another, parallel in series. Okay, so moving on. So I want to take some time to talk about how a cell works. And this is really, really important to have uh, at least some basic understanding of this is, so we're looking at this from the uh, electron perspective. Okay, so electron gets pulled in to the positive end and it gets thrown out of the negative end of the battery. But what's going on inside? One way to imagine it is that on the positive end, it's used up all its energy and the electrons are coming back to sort of recharge, you might even say. Okay, so this is a low potential, low potential energy end. And the, the good way to think about this is sort of like a roller coaster ride, right? So usually the roller coaster starts off at the highest end or high potential energy, right? So it's storing all that energy at the beginning. Then you start falling and going around in circles and throwing you around and things like that, okay? So then all of that is about cons using that energy up. And usually once you finish the ride, you're back at the bottom, right? And so if you think about um, your typical amusement park ride, you usually start down here, right? And then right away, at the very beginning of the ride, they bring you up, right? Because they're giving you high potential. Right? And then so starting and ending is in the same position there. Okay? And that's roughly how we can imagine a battery working, okay? uh, kind of like a roller coaster ride. Uh, the textbook likes to use the example of the um, skiers. So they're being uh, hauled up the, the top of the skiing hill. Similar idea, okay? similar analogy. Okay, um, our next learning objective is to look at uh, quote and apply Kirchhoff's law to any circuit. So Kirchhoff's got two main laws that we're concerned about. And the first law states that the net charge entering or leaving a junction is zero. So I'm just going to back up here to the parallel circuit. So you can see that there's these, um, there's these little dots. I'm just going to make them a lot bigger. So it's kind of obvious, okay? So these are junctions. You may not always see them uh, plotted as dots, okay, but those are junctions, and they interconnect multiple wires together. So we might call this an in-junction, and we might call this an out-junction right there. So the idea is that uh, you ha always have to have the same amount of charges entering or leaving a junction. And um, we'll go over this, and then I'll, I'll maybe give you guys a slightly different analogy, but you may understand this already. Um, so this is sort of the mathematical way of expressing it right here, where n is the total number of branches entering or leaving a junction. <clears throat> and the current in each branch is i subscript n. <clears throat> so here we have two examples down here for you. This is example number one and example number two. Two. So in example number one, <clears throat> there's 11 amps entering the junction or the in point. And then we can also see that there should be, or there must be rather, 11 amps exiting the junction. So there might be two branches here, four in the top branch, there's four amps. And then in the bottom amp, sorry, in the bottom, in the bottom branch, there are seven amps, okay? And together, there are seven amps in total. Uh, similarly, in example two, this is a slightly more complex example. Uh, I use the red arrows to de denote going in, okay? Sort of like um, how we've got the positive end going in right here. Okay, so the in branch, okay? So 10 amps, three amps, five amps going in. So together, there's 18 amps going in, which means I'm using the blue arrows to de denote pointing out. There has to also be 18 amps going out. Okay, so they don't always have to go together in uh, the way that we, we saw earlier, but they can go sort of in and out, uh, sort of like we're seeing in example number two. Usually you won't see something like this. Okay, Your examples will usually be something more like example one. 
another way I like to think about that is, I'm just gonna go down here. We might have, um, I like to think of it as sort of like a big highway, right? And so you got a bunch of, uh, you might have a bunch of cars here. So car one, car two, right, car three, I'm just gonna write four, five, six, and seven. And then so if this highway gets cut off uh, in this branch, and this branch can only allow one car to go through, whereas the other section of the highway might be really, really wide, Okay, and this might allow uh, six cars to go through. So I'm just gonna write two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a really big, uh, very similar in size, okay? And this only allows one car to go through here. And of course we can even, um, I mean, there might even be multiple branches here. So there might be a branch here that allows two cars to go through. Okay, and then down here, we have the other cars, okay? So they could be branched uh, four, five, Six and seven. So there could be three branches, there could be 10 branches, okay? Um, so the idea here is that um, they'll, they'll sort of equally fill up each of the separate branches, and then they will come back together and all travel together again, okay? And, and sort of like a big highway again. So then we'll see all seven cars come back together here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that was Kirchhoff's first law. Um, And the second law is in, uh, oh, sorry, the one last little thing I forgot to mention here is Kirchhoff's law is also based off of the idea of conservation of charge. So hence, same charge entering or leaving, charges cannot be destroyed. Um, you could maybe even recall some of the, connect some of the ideas to chapter seven that um, you cannot destroy or create, uh, charges have to be conserved, all right? So that, that's, that's also one of the rules for nuclear physics as well. Um, it's also known as the current law because it deals mostly with current being balanced, you might say, on one end and the other. Now, the second law is focusing on voltage. So sometimes it's called the voltage law. So as you might tell, voltage has to be conserved in this case. Uh, and voltage is, if you think about it, is actually a conservation of energy, right? Voltage, potential, electric potential difference. So voltage is always based off of the idea of work per unit charge, right? So um, in tra traversing any closed loop in a circuit, so usually all our circuits are closed loops. They're very rarely will you have an open loop. Uh, if it's open loop, it's an incomplete circuit really. Um, anyways, uh, getting back, the net electric potential difference must be zero, okay? So if we look at that, so here we have our example. If we have a battery that's eight volts, then five volts may be used up here, one volt may be used up there, two volts may be used up there, okay? But the sum of all of these, five plus one plus two is equal to eight. So what the battery provides, everything else will use all of that up. Uh, and so as a result, energy uh, will be conserved as a result of that. Uh, so here we have another sort of mathematical expression here. Um, little details down here. N is the total number of cells or resistors in a loop. Okay, so uh, here we have one cell or resistor. And Vm is the potential uh, difference at each element. Okay, so that's the 5, the 2, and the 1. Right, so when we add all that together, it has to equal to what the battery provided or the cells. Okay, guys, um, so a few examples here to maybe um, uh, maybe check your knowledge here. So if we have a battery providing five amps, what is the current, what's the current at B, A, and C? Okay, so the current is always constant in a series circuit. So at A, it's gonna be five amps. B is also gonna be five amps. This is not voltage, okay? We just talked about the second law. That was dealing with voltage. Current is always constant in a series circuit, right? Now, in a parallel circuit, so according to Kirchhoff's first law, okay, 
So because there's no junctions, you can even say because there's no junctions, current stays the same. Now that we do have a junction, so we've got a junction here, in and out. So there's five amps going in, there has to be five amps coming out, which means if there's three amps over here, then the missing current is two amps over there. I guess I probably shouldn't read my answers there. Right? So that's example number one. Well, the, these, th these circuit diagrams will get a little bit more um, difficult later on when we include Ohm's law, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, our second example is dealing with Kirchhoff's second law. And so we have uh, 15 volts, 9 and 3. And so what's left over then is uh, 15 minus 9, so that's there's 12 there, which means there's 3 left over. Okay, so this missing uh, voltage for this resistor is 3 volts. Okay, last one here. So here, I'm just uh, adding a few more, a little bit more variation for you guys. So um, here we can see that the um, we've got 7 volts on this side. And what that also means is um, there also has to be 7 volts over here as well. So another way to sort of reversely remember Kirchhoff's law is that... Um, we actually saw this in the first example here, is that series, sorry, not series, current, current is constant in series. And here, voltage is constant in parallel. Okay, so there, it's sort of the, the hidden uh, assumptions of Kirchhoff's first and second laws, right? And um, and this is a, a, a slightly easier way to remember that. Uh, it's not necessarily the way that you want to memorize Kirchhoff's law, but it's um, it, it's part of the, the part that's going to stick the, the easiest, okay? So um, seven volts on one side, and then the light bulb is essentially a resistor. So essentially, we know there must be seven, which means our missing piece, our missing mystery piece, must be seven minus two minus 2.4. And so that's 4.4, which means there is 2.6 missing, 2.6 volts. Okay, so this is a, a slightly different demonstration uh, of Kirchhoff's uh, second law, where, and we just look at the, the reading one more time, uh, in, tra in traversing any closed loop in a circuit, the net electric potential difference must be zero. Okay, so um, that's it for today, guys. Um, Kirchhoff's two laws, a few simple circuits, and how does a battery or uh, a cell work? Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys probably in a few weeks uh, as we're going to be preparing for our, um, our uh, formative assessment on Chapter 7 next time. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye.